who uh, who Snake was on the roster, guys, but turns out it's Apocalypse. So, uh, someone I'm very well familiar with, and one of my favorite Terran players, one of the nicest guys I've ever had the pleasure of interacting with, too. So, well, this is Snake. It's uh, going to be Apocalypse. Anyways, this is the Acer Team Story Cup Season Three. Good morning, everybody. Thank you for tuning in. We are currently uh, the score between these two teams is one to two in the favor of IBD. I'm Rifkin, joined today by Zombie Grub. Let's get into the action. Spawning in the top left corner of the map. From my insanity, one of the strongest players on their team by far. It's gonna be the red Terran player, Jakshi. And Nippa writes, as the blue Terran player, it is IVD's snake, or as we know him, Apocalypse. Now I do want to give this guy a lot of credit, actually. This is a really intelligent choice, in my opinion, coming out of IVD, because, well, first off, if you guys don't remember, once upon a time, Polt used to play in the Zotac Cup, and so did Apocalypse on a weekly basis. And Apocalypse was one of the very few people who could not only take games off of Polt on a regular basis, but actually beat him in the finals for weeks. Uh, actually, it's kind of funny. They, I think it was like Polt vs. Apocalypse one week, Polt one, then Apocalypse one, then Polt one week three type thing. I mean, he's traded out with some of the best when it comes to TVT. So for them to send them out against Jokshi, I'm not sure if he's got a specific sort of sniping plan or if he's just going to play the macro game on Habitation Station, but this was a really good call in my opinion out of IVD. I'm glad you brought that up because I was thinking, what is Jokshi's weakness? He's strong in TVP. He has said himself that he feels confident in it. Really good at TVT. I don't know his opinions on that. TVT was the one that I didn't know, but I feel I... like I watch a lot of TVTs where he plays and he just, he's also really good at that. So. Honestly, I think Jaxi's Achilles heels is TVC. Not to say it's bad by any means. I, I wanted mean, to say that it was his weakest, but I wasn't sure. Well, that's what I'm saying. Like, I see Bly, Teffel, like, all these players in Europe constantly beating Jaxi down when it comes to the weekly cups. Now, granted, there's probably the good mentality that Jaxi's like, it's a weekly cup. I'm just grinding it out. I don't really care about playing my best. But still, it's it's the one matchup I see him actually lose on a... First blood. I'm not yeah. going to say regular basis, but more frequent basis. Yeah, I would say that as well. I'm glad, you know, we found. <laughs> we agree! Yay! 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 But, um, but, you know, Paco's being good at TVT, definitely, you know, that's Oops. that's why I sent him out. It was a good choice. Second guess from Jokshi. So, you know, it's funny, a lot of, a lot of TVT in Season 2, guys. Like, right now in StarCraft 2, a lot of TVT meta revolves around, like, getting the Raven, playing defensive, maybe pushing early with Hellions, trying to catch your opponent before they get uh, Banshees out, and what have you. But in the Acer Team Story Cup, I think almost 100% of the TVTs I cast in Season 2 were Banshee versus Banshee. Or, you know, yeah. Banshee Viking versus Banshee Viking type thing, but... Uh, what I do like out of uh, out of Jokshi is the fact that he might be going for that earlier... If it's not a, a Banshee, at least the Raven. Because I feel like that air tech in general, regardless of what you open with, is very strong in this matchup. Air dominance is everything. Yeah. Oh, but getting air dominance is everything. Um, the, first, the person who gets the Banshee and the person who doesn't expect the Banshee, I mean, the Banshee just, you know, completely destroys. Uh, the only bad thing about going banshee like with cloak really investing into it is if they identify that it's going on if you see a scan you might want to think about not getting two banshees with cloak uh and actually jachi you know no one's scanned no one's actually seen a lot of anything honestly in the main base uh but he's still getting a raven so just preferring to go defensive in general he could get a banshee later just one no cloak obviously uh just to have some map presence uh, or he could just scan oh. <laughs> either one both players are actually play incredibly defensive. I mean, the Raven on one end for Jashi and the Viking on the other here I for Apocalypse. But it was noting, and this is like the critical part about the game, guys. These depots that they put down, if you're not a Terran player, you don't understand how important these depots are yeah. for scouting. Because this ledge on Habitation Station so often drops. Um. Whether it's Hellions, Marines, Winnow Mines, this is the one ledge on the map that ends your game more often than not. Jachi's supply was actually in the worst position, as that can be sniped uh, with a Banshee without any repercussions if you don't have a Viking yourself. But it doesn't matter in this game, so whatever. Uh, I was just going to say that I feel like the defensive build of going Raven Viking is what a lot more Terran players are liking, just simply because if they do get scouted, they're going Banshee. If your opponent gets Raven Viking, not only do they pretty much automatically shut it down, but they have that viking and raven that's actually very useful for later on but we're still trying to play a little bit of catch up we do have apocalypse getting oh that's so cool okay so he got one sword and then he 
Wait, AC, that's building, right? I there it is. Done, I was like, what the? It's done intentionally so you can cancel it, I think, if you need Yeah, to. it's intentional so we can cancel it. Even then, uh, I don't like that he automatically got the two, anyways. Uh, that's. It's, it's kind of cool, though. I. I've never seen anyone do this. I saw someone do it and I forget who it was and I was like, that is the smartest thing in the world and I've completely forgotten about it. <laughs> so to explain real quick, to elaborate a little bit further for those who maybe aren't quite sure what we're talking about is, by having the missile turret like 90% complete, he can very easily finish it and kill a banshee that might come in to snipe off, say, his reactor or his tech lab or whatever, because again, as a Terran player, air, air dominance is everything and cloaked banshees are a big pain in the ass to deal with. But what this does by not completing it gives you the option to cancel it and return 75 resources or whatever it is. So it's actually really kind of cool that he's done this because it's safe but also economic, which is weird to say for a missile turret. But wrapping around here towards the north, we do have that medevac fully loaded. It will get scouted. But right now, APOC, it's going to be. He just moved his Viking too. That is really. <laughs> he's got time. Hellions though. I mean, it's not just the Marine count. He's got Hellions, he's got a Banshee. He'll be able to mm -hmm. deal with this. Yeah, for sure. Uh, he also does have that Viking with the Raven Viking combo from Jochi. He's not going to be able to do anything against it. I believe that Jochi's going to look to go ahead and siege up the natural. And you need a lot of Helen to take down a tank siege. Um, and he doesn't quite have that number yet. He's going into mech, uh, by the way. Yeah, two factories. I, I mean, the thing for Apocalypse is his expansion was down way before Jockey's, by and large. Yeah. His SCP count is awesome right now. He can afford to take a couple of losses. That's what he's afforded by sort of this economic lead early on. But as we see, it's going to be very difficult to deal with these tanks. The Banshee can't even run in. Point Defense Rune will simply nullify it. Yeah. And the Vikings will nullify it too, obviously, right? Because there's only one Viking for... Uh... Yeah. Oh, Jockey actually this runs in there and the loses the Viking. Auto turret's been right. thrown down. These are actually doing a oh, ton of damage. These are dishing out a lot yeah. of damage and buffering some too, but SCVs are lost in the fray, some Marines die in that mix, and this tank has got a siege up. Yeah, he needs to kill that one Viking. With one oh. HP. There we go, dies to the turret. <laughs> this kind of allows yeah. him to stabilize a little bit, but he's still got to worry about the tank fire in this command center. Now, the nice thing is his tank will keep Joshi from advancing any further. The problem is he's got to repair the command center. He's already taken some SCV losses. He's not in a great spot defensively. This is kind of the give and take for TVT now. Uh, if you go for a command center earlier on in your opponent, then you are open to taking damage to their push when they have you know the tanks coming out faster. Oh, this reposition uh, by Joshi is actually really key. That one tank. Yeah, and this is a really strong push by Joshi. If you can like push this back with relatively minimal losses, they're actually good because you did get that earlier command center. But Apocalypse took a lot of damage. Um, not necessarily game ending, but I, I. Mm. <laughs> oh, he can't even get, get his expansion now. He actually just lost the tank. He's going to lose another tank, and that uh. is possibly game ending. Because, again, he doesn't have a solid way to deal with this. The Banshees are cool, but he's got not, first off, not enough of them. He's got nothing to stop the Vikings. SUVs are pulled into this, and he'll break one or two of the tanks, maybe. You know, I don't think he should have, she should have sieged up right there. Yeah, unseized tanks, of course, do a really high DPS because they just do the splash damage. Oh, doesn't matter. She's going to be called. You know, that is the weakness of mech, though. It, 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 ignoring the command center, the earlier command center for a second, like, mech, you lack units early on. And realistically, we yeah. saw it. Like, it was four tanks to one. Bottom line. I mean, <laughs> beyond anything yeah. else. Was, so many Marines pushed up that ramp. Either way, Joshi earned that victory in a big way. Now tied up the series two to two between my insanity and IVD. And the big question is, who does IVD send out next? I mean, I... <laughs> From, from casting experience, I think I've got more faith in Puck's TVP than he does. So I know that uh, between it, like his Twitter and his stream, he's been a little bit shaken his TVP. So I would kind of imagine he'd be not the first person they'd send out. So what's that leave? Uh, Zerg Zing Zing, Ruff. Um, I know they picked up some new players recently, but I'm not sure if any of them are uh, people they're going to play or field today. Ruff could do something weird to try and just... Well, that's what he's known for, right? Like, try... Like, yeah. I don't know a single person who plays Ruff and goes like, Boy, I'm looking forward to a standard game. <laughs> <laughs> but Jachi probably wouldn't know that. I mean, Ruff's a pretty, you know, not a whole lot of attention North American player. Uh, Jachi's not going to be facing him a lot. Um, yeah, that's true. So, I, I that might be... They might save him for last, honestly. Just is like a well try. I, hang on, I can't. Are you in the lobby? I 